Hi, it's Naomi back with another vlog for you. This time I'm going to be talking about Stasi 77 by David Young. So this book is actually fourth in a series of thrillers that I read. Um, we've already had Stasi Child, Stasi Wolf, A Darker State, and now Stasi 77. So I actually mentioned this series um, in answer to one of the questions in the Book Doctors video uh, a little while ago. I said this series didn't get enough love and uh, I saw a new one come out, it came into my shop, I bought it, I read it, I loved it, so um, I thought this was a perfect opportunity to give some kudos to this series that it rightfully deserves. So some of them I have read um, in print and I've listened to a few on uh, audio as well. I got into them because one day I was decorating in my house and I wanted to put on an audiobook to pass some time so I picked kind of like a random thriller that I might enjoy and it was um, A Dark Estate, the third book in this series so I really enjoyed it so I uh, ended up going back and filling in the gaps of the earlier books and now we finally have book four out. So the series follows Karen Muller, she is uh, like a detective in the East German People's Police. So as the books are set in the 1970s, um, East Germany is under Soviet rule. We have um, the Berlin Wall dividing East and West Berlin. Um, so that's just where we are in kind of like historical context. So in Stasi 77, Karen's called in to investigate a particularly difficult case. Um, so, she, so a couple of men are found uh, tied up and uh, then left to die in buildings that are set on fire. Um, and just as Karen thinks she's getting somewhere, the Stasi call her off this case. And this is quite a common theme in the novel. Sometimes the Stasi are quite the antagonists um, because they outrank her at pretty much every turn. And sometimes they try and divert her onto a different track or trap her in some ways. Um, she never knows when buildings are bugs and whether it's safe to talk to someone because she never knows uh, exactly who's a Stasi agent and who isn't. Um, and it creates this great atmosphere of, of distrust, of, of secrets and lies. Um, it's really effective in the novel. I mean, because these guys could destroy her career and her private life at the drop of a hat because they have that power. Stasi 77 also has a secondary story. We get short chapters from a prisoner of war in 1945. He's a French resistance fighter who was captured along with his two brothers by the Nazis. And he was then um, put into uh, forced labor camps, concentration camps. Um, and his story is incredibly harrowing. It's actually based on real life events, which are sort of uh, mentioned in the author's note at the end. And we know that these two stories, the French prisoner of war and Karen's story are going to uh, intersect at some point, but um, David Junkie does a great job of keeping us guessing as to how that might happen. Karen's a great protagonist. She is a strong female character. She's tenacious, she's smart and quick thinking. Um, despite her difficult personal life, um, which comes up in the series quite a lot, she she never loses her conviction to do what she thinks is the right thing. And I think that's why you root for her so much. And, and that's what you want in Detective, really. You want to hear, you know, them against the corrupt system. That's what you want. Um, and that's just one of the many sort of reasons why I love this series. I mean, I'd recommend it for fans of, like, John le Carre or Eric Ambler, Martin Cruz Smith or uh, Philip Kerr as well. Um, I think it'd suit those who either like a spy novel or perhaps um, a more detective-led mystery. Um, I actually, after I read this, I made sure to go and check the author's Twitter because um, you could read this book very much as an ending to the series, but luckily there is gonna be a fifth one. It's gonna be called Stasi Winter, I believe. So that's great news. Um, honestly, I just read it in two sittings because it was such a page turner. It's going to be a great read for summer. Um, I think you could read it, yes, as a standalone, but I would really recommend that people get into this series right from the beginning because there are a few breadcrumb trails that he leaves throughout the first three books that really do pay off in this one. So um, if you have read any of the Karen Muller books, do let me know what you think. Or if you're reading this book right now, let me know. Um, but thank you very much for listening to me today and I will see you next time. Bye bye.